the whole idea of work injury is is something that I think every organization that I have ever seen struggles with to some extent. The control or lack of control of it, um, really, either at an org level or at a team level, very frankly, impacts people, I mean, real people. It impacts real value. It impacts on the portfolio of projects that a or work or products that an organization can deliver. So this is real stuff, and it's really important. The downside is that there we go. <laughs> the downside is that it really isn't anywhere near as sexy as something like test driven development or or mobbing or peer pro, you know peer programming those kinds of things. Obviously, things that are really important, but this is probably the most important because if you have out of control work entry is there going to be no agile for you but you're going to always be whipsawed the definition of work entry is fairly simple and we'll, we'll, we'll focus on the team level but very frankly a lot of this can also be leveraged in terms at the portfolio level which is probably as important at least at a team level, right? If you're working with a team, this is the most important thing because, very frankly, um, it, it's a, about the decision, the decision process about what you're going to do, when you're going to do it, and whether or not someone can walk up and tap you on the shoulder and say, "Hey, you know, Tom, it's it's time to do something else." There are four basic things that we'll refer to all the way through here. Uh, the idea of push versus pull um, as a as a dyed in the wool agilista at this point, uh, having gone through that transformation roughly 20 years ago, been a programmer, coder, all of those kinds of things. So I, I grew up with work being pushed to me. Um, pull is significantly better team pulls the work in, an organization pulls the work in. Story-driven versus interrupt-driven. Um, interrupt is going to come up over and over and over again because that's where uh, a significant amount of work entry problems occur. Now, let's face it, interrupts happen, and we'll talk about things like incidents. Well, you know what? They're going to happen. We need to plan for them. Maybe we need to organize our organization to actually uh, adjust for that. Maximum utilization fallacy. I'm sorry, even today I see people who maximize the, the utilization of whole teams, individuals, book them to 100%, make sure that they are always late and always dealing with um, catastrophes. Decide to use a nice word and then flow. Obviously, we all know if we've been trained in lean that the idea is that work should flow through and whatever process, whatever arc it needs to go through, it needs to flow through so that so that it can get to the end and get feedback and deliver value versus stopping in the middle and waiting for something else to happen. This really is a decision process. Why do we care? Why do we care? Uh, I think I've alluded to this a couple of times, but very frankly, uh, we care because at a team level, when when we get interrupted, when there's no work in, control of work entry, stuff gets disrupted. It gets dropped on the floor. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me. But but very frankly, when I get interrupted. It takes me a while. Even when I get, I take care of the interruption and go back to what I was doing, it takes me a while. Actually, I know it's not just me because very frankly, I've read the papers. Everybody has this problem. There's no multitasking for human beings, unless you count maybe talking and breathing. Uh, and that's even hard to do. Everything else becomes late. 
right? So if something new comes in, you get interrupted to take on something new, well, everything else has to get paused. Everything else is late. It reduces trust. And very frankly, every IT team, every software team, every team in the world, they're bankable. They have two bankable currencies. One is attention and the other one is trust. We're gonna focus on the trust one today. And uh, it wrecks people. Um, let's face it, we're in the middle of the great resignation where people are moving around. Work, you know, you can find work anywhere. You don't like it, you move and go somewhere else. Well, very frankly, if if we're continually stopping, interrupting, out of control work entry, we chew people up. It also has an impact on the organizational side. That all scales up. That scales up significantly easier than than agile sometimes scales up, right? Key initiatives are not completed. Turnover goes up because we rack people. Higher costs, less innovation. All of these are, are <laughs> you know, very frankly, if we if we can't get stuff done, then it, is it because we don't have the right people or because we are out of control and, you know, and, and making it hard for people to actually deliver? You know, the reality is that we that you can aspire to other, you know, to greatness. You can aspire to something else. There is something else out there other than, well, it's just the way it is. Back to that word, just the way it is. That's usually code for culture or worse yet. We're taking a pragmatic approach, which is usually code word for something that's, uh, well, half something, right? Half something. We should aspire to work entry nirvana. And just a simple way of looking at work entry nirvana, right? Is that all work comes in, whether it's a product owner, if you're doing Scrum or any other Agile framework or any framework, comes to someone, it's evaluated, prep for work, it meets some definition of ready, it's prioritized, goes into a backlog, and then the team pulls it in as capacity is available, right? The, the delivery pattern in this is FIFO, first in, first out. Great, right? It's predictable. It builds trust. All of those things that, that are important to you know, why we use teams rather than, than other things. Each one of these that we'll go through, and there are a number of patterns to look at. Um, and I'm not going to call them anti patterns or anything like that, but they're patterns that we can look at. This is solid. This is a solid work. Hi there. I hope you enjoyed that last clip. My name is Michael Maludis, and if you'd like to watch the full 60 minutes of that last webcast while also gaining complete unlimited access to our entire library of IT learning, simply visit our subscribe page at greatpro.org slash subscribe. Unlimited annual access is $199 per year, but if you use the coupon code learn to earn you can drop that membership fee to just $149. That's less than $13 per month for unlimited access to over 1,000 hours of on-demand career development, covering the entire spectrum of IT management best practices, including business analysis and requirements, software development, quality and testing, risk management, process improvement, project management, and even digital transformation. But your membership doesn't just give you unlimited access to our vast learning library. You also get free access to our mobile app, as well as direct access to our network of over 300 of the world's leading IT consultants, all of whom are dedicated to putting practical knowledge at your fingertips so that you can learn more and earn more. I hope you will join me in becoming a member of the great IT professional and advancing your career with us. And if you're on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button above so that you get notified whenever we publish new free webcasts each week of the year. Thank you for your time and best wishes for your continued success.